Yeah, so my name's Campbell. Um, I'm from North Bay State College. So a bit of background about me. So uh, I finished school. I had one of the best graphics teachers. Um, Same. <laughs> he was it was mate, he was the type of guy who was like, he's there after school, before school. Um, and so I finished university. He really pushed for me to go and study design. So I actually yeah. studied a Bachelor of Architecture. Awesome. Same. So <laughs> I've got my uh, my Bachelor of Architecture. Yep. And I was at the end of it and I was just, I wasn't enjoying it. I was just like, at the end, it was like, um, you were, I felt like I was undercutting other people around me just to try and get a position and stuff yep. like that. And then um, it's my, my origin story is the fact that he, that graphics teacher died. Wow. And so um, I went to his funeral, so I only went to a school, 450 kids, 400 kids. Right. Uh, he died and he had 4,000 people at his funeral. Wow, so, that says a lot. Yeah, and I, lot. I thought to myself, I was just like, the fact that he uh, influenced me in that, that way and like made me want to go and do more in my life and stuff like that, like, that would be a really good career. So then I went into education, so I've... All my electives were basically covered through a lot of architecture. So um, I design, I got design electives. All my history minor, and then I did uh, some maths just to top it off. So Sweet. I can teach, I teach senior maths and senior design at the moment, but yep. I've taught history too. Perfect. And how long have you been doing design education teaching? Yeah. So this is my fourth year teaching. Awesome. So awesome. you're uh, very much in the same same company because coming from an architectural background myself, it's. Um, left the industry for very similar reasons and yeah. uh, the graphic teacher was the one who guided me and you're 100% right and I think that is the power of the teacher that gets overlooked and sometimes so undervalued. Yeah. So undervalued. So um, what's your, if I were to ask you, what's your biggest challenge in design and tech education? What would that be? Yeah, so I think like the big thing is I, I got my senior students and the big thing with them is there's a lot of content. There's a lot of broadness in the fact that going mm. from like having 10 weeks, oh no, well, sorry, about 15 to 20 weeks to look at human centered design, yep. that's a huge concept that people even just do a thesis on. Correct. And people spend a large part of my, amount of their life looking at that. And we only really like touch the surface of it. And yep. then we move on to sustainable design, yeah. which even from the, the um, chat like that we just were in the keynote, you could see that it was a huge amount of concept. And um, like for some students, it's really difficult to understand those concepts Very quickly, on a yeah. deeper level yeah. um, and then apply it to their own, own understanding. So yeah. like these assessments that they get nine, 10 weeks to work on, um, but we have to give them time to do that. Yeah. And to apply those concepts is really difficult. Interesting. And and what do you think you as an educator would need to make that happen? I, I think the fact that like design's a new subject, um, for, like connect, uh, connecting my students to the real world. I'm quite lucky that I've got some connections through mm. my architecture days and you know, I know some like um, industrial design and stuff like that who yeah. have been able to give me some uh, like real world examples or being able to give me some resources yeah which I think are very valuable and each time that that happens I feel like my students get better yeah um, and I think that that's like obviously design's very broad and I've got that architectural background but I can see other teachers and in myself there's link there's, there's um, gaps of knowledge do you bring in the, your contacts from those industry days? to talk to your students? Yeah, I, I do that and um, I'm quite lucky. I've got a friend who um, graduated industrial design last year and was Queensland Young Designer of the Year. Oh, wow. Yeah, awesome. so. That's a uh, perfect resource. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so he designed um, a virtual reality headset for Burns patients. Love it. Uh, for physiotherapy. Yeah. Um, so, and I've been able to get him to come in and chat once, which I think was a really valuable resource. That's perfect. And I think opportunities like um, our assessment was, uh, IA2 was um, how to assist prep students transitioning into school and mm -hmm. limit the anxiety for both parent and mm -hmm. child. Yeah. Um, we were we are a Peter, 10, uh, Peter 12 school, sorry. Right. So we were able to go and visit the preps. So I think the big part of like getting students involved and getting them connected is like 
getting them like getting that emotional connection getting them to yep. be like this is and and those stakeholder interviews those real life examples those links to the industry yep. is what the student wants because at the end of yep. the day that's something tangible to them 100 percent, 100 percent. now if you were to send some send a strong message and we we're realizing that because this is a big systems problem there are a lot of different moving parts and variables and a lot of things affecting how the classroom activity gets done so teachers are constantly up against a lot of challenges so if you were to send a message to let's say their parents on the importance of the design and tech education the skills that come from it just imagine there's a thousand parents yeah. right in front of you what would that message be yeah so i think the, the skills that you get out of design is not the, the the hand skills. It's not it's not the it's a way of thinking. The, yep. the problem solving, and that's not just a skill that you're going to use in just design. Mm. Um, you're going to use that in medicine. You're going to use that. It's transferable. Uh, it's transferable, and the fact that like I I also teach maths, and I sell sell the students that the finite skill of being able to work out the area of something. Yeah. You you will be able to use that skill to adapt to different situations and problem solve, yep. and being able to adapt quickly is mm. a skill that people want in, in the real world because then that way you can change and you can see the things that are going well, you mm. can see the things that need to change and you can change, uh, you Perfect. can help accordingly. Uh, it's music to my ears when, yeah. you're, when you're saying those things. And um, last but not least, if you could send a message to leadership, yeah. whether that's government, whether that's tertiary, whether that's within your own school, what would that be? Yeah, I think um, the connections from Akara, so um, grade 7 to 10, mm -hmm. and then the jump to grade 11 and 12 with QCAA, they don't necessarily speak to each other all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, like if you lose a student, so you have a, a student, this is an elective, this is not all students, oh sorry, in grade 7 all students do it, but not for a long period of time. Yeah. If you lose a student at that level, they're not going to do it in grade Eight, nine, ten, eleven, True. twelve. Yeah. Um, even though that that's something that they might have been interested in, but they just haven't had that opportunity as much. Um, core subjects: maths, English, science, humanities. Um, they're given a large amount of focus, um, especially at schools, because that's where NAPLAN results come from, mm -hmm. um, and that's where compulsory schooling, uh, compulsory subjects in mm. grade eleven and twelve come from, yeah. which yeah. is English. And, and I, I feel like the skills that are developed in design mm. um, and that design and technology are underappreciated in the fact that like a lot of people don't see the cross curriculum yep. and the fact that these skills can help you not just I think they also still see it as those you know 20 years ago workshop yeah, grungy definitely. that kind of a mentality and that needs to break it yeah definitely break. and that's the thing is uh, like like it, it's also really difficult and I was talking about someone yesterday is the fact that like Technology has a lot of people from broad backgrounds. Where if you're in a maths classroom, you're in an English classroom, you're an English teacher, and that's your mm. focus. Um, there's not too many subheadings under English, or too, too many subheadings under maths. True. Where in design or design technology, the amount the amount of diverse people and people from different backgrounds looking at different problems. Yep. And it's the fact that like even UI and UX has been added into this. So yep. digital design <laughs> keeps growing. Not. Yeah. Listening, yeah, yeah. And the fact that like it's such a broad field means that I think it's really hard to have a collective voice because like you don't have one direction mm. because you have multiple people with their own opinions on how it goes because of their different backgrounds. Yep. You also have a lot of different people who are um, yeah, who think it's the right way. There's a lot of people here today who will say that the art of making things by hand is still mm. extremely valuable, yeah. which is good, and it, it, it might be. Uh, but then you'll also have those other people here today who are saying, like, people need to be focused just purely on design, the, the, the understanding and changing and design mm. thinking, which is hard because you've got two people pulling it in different directions. Yeah. And I feel yeah. that that's really hard to have one collective voice to yeah. talk to I think talk that's about. well said, and you've shared a lot of very valuable insights made so is there anything else you'd like to share just in general advice for your students or parents or anyone really um but well, advice to everyone is really just like get involved and look at all different backgrounds so um there's 
design is literally changing the world. Innovation, as you said in your keynote, is yep. is looking at like change and, mm. and positive change. Yep. That's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and that's for parents and students and teachers and the fact that like look at Dover like look at as many different examples as you can and then let your students drive towards what the, what they enjoy doing and helping them become not just designers but understanding what mm. design is all about. Perfect. Mate, really appreciate you sharing yeah. your insights. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for your time. Thank you.